Well, good morning and welcome to Cane Creek Baptist Church. Glad you're joining us and uh, pray that you've had a good uh, week and appreciate all that the Lord has done for us uh, in these days. And we're so grateful uh, for what God has done. Now, uh, let me say this up right up front. Don't forget to pray for these, uh, uh, pray for the services today. And remember that um, the music and the songs, we have no special performance rights or any copyright agreements. And um, we, we're going to um, do old hymns and different things that we can to, to serve and, and to honor the Lord with here today and uh, in our service uh, this morning. I want you to... Um, be grateful. Now, uh, some of our folks that normally do all help in all this, uh, they're unable to uh, uh, be in the building today. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to do several different jobs and uh, hope there'll be a blessing to you uh, and that the, the Lord would help us. I'm going to play a song and I'm going to sing a song. And uh, so uh, hopefully it'll be a help to you as we are trying to do things for, uh, for the service of the Lord. And in the meantime, you turn your Bible over to the book of Genesis, chapter number 27. Book of Genesis, chapter number 27, and we're going to, that's where our message will be from today. But let's start with a word of prayer. And then we're going to, the, I'll step out of the camera, I'll go to the piano, and uh, we're going to have a few songs uh, in that respect. Our Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. We pray, dear God, that you'd be with each one. Thanking you, dear God, for this great day and for all that you've done for us. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd be with the service today. Uh, I, I know that uh, there's some hurting and I pray that you'd be with them and help them. Thank you for all that you have done. In Christ's lovely name that we pray. Amen. All right. We're going to go have some few songs. Now, uh, in the songs... We're going to do some of these older songs, and um, I think that we'll do, um, first of all, probably at Calvary, um, and um, so as soon as I find it here, uh, we'll, we'll begin to we'll do that. All right, thanks. We're actually going to sing this one, and then we'll we'll play another one somewhere. Uh, but uh, listen to this one at Cal. If you're in a car and you can sing, uh, let's let's remember that. Let's sing. First verse: Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not. My Lord was crucified. Here we go.
next song we're going to do is an uh, old song that we're just going to uh, uh, play. And this old song is uh, Victory in Jesus. I'm going to tell you the only victory we're going to get is in Christ, in Jesus Christ. So you listen to this old song as we play it here this morning. I certainly hope that was a blessing to you, and uh, hope you've enjoyed it. All right, I want you to turn, if you will, this morning to the book of Genesis, book of Genesis, chapter number 27 in the book of Genesis. I'm going to read uh, one verse in chapter number 27. And then I'm going to go over and give us a little history out of another verse or two out of this book of Genesis. Genesis 27, verse number 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice of is Jacob's voice. But the hands are the hands of Esau. I want you to look at Genesis 25. Go back to the 25th chapter. Let me give you another verse here. Genesis 25, verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, that is Rebekah, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. I want you to make a note of this. Look at, look at this in your Bible. I've got it underlined in mine. 
the elder shall serve the younger. And then in verse 27 of that same chapter where we are, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Jacob and, I, and Isaac, excuse me, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Jacob and Jacob sawed pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. Let me go back to verse 27. I, I skipped a part. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of, the, of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're very thankful today for all that you have done for us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would add your blessing to the reading of the Word of God. I pray that you would help us as we've studied and as we're trying to preach this, dear Heavenly Father. We pray that you would be with us and help us. This very unusual message. And I pray that you would help us. In Christ's name, we humbly pray, amen. Well, I want to preach to you this morning on this thought, the voice and hands. The voice and hands. Our Bible reading today is the story of Isaac wanting to bless Esau with the covenant blessing. I want to talk to you about a few things that we're seeing in this story. We see, first of all, in this passage of Scripture, in this home, in this home of Isaac and Rebekah, we see some things that may be going on in some of our homes today. We see favoritism. I, I think one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do as a parent is to, to be very careful with three children not to show favoritism. We had a very talented family. 
my wife and I. And some of them still are to this very day. But a lot of parents, and I've seen this in, in, in the ministry for all these years now, a lot of things that parents have their favorite child. You, you're just asking for problems. Favoritism, that's what happened here. Isaac had a favorite, and it was Esau. Rebecca had a favorite, and it was Jacob. Favoritism. We're seeing favoritism in this home, and, it, and it's going to totally divide it. We not only see favoritism, but we see hypocrisy and deception that's in this family. We see trickery or tricks. That's where the name, Jacob's name, uh, we find his name means supplanter or trickster. We just read to you in Genesis 25, verses 27 through 34, we just read to you about the birthright. First of all, this birthright was promised by God himself to the younger son. In verse number 23, the very last phrase says, And the elder shall serve the younger. Jacob was going, God made this choice and but this family did not wait on God to do the work. They were going to do it for him. We get in trouble when we start doing God's work. I'm talking about when God may have somebody under conviction and we do things or try to engineer things around on our own way and to get it done faster than God's doing it. If I could make, if I could wave a magic wand today, if, I, if that was possible, I'd take all the sickness off this earth. I, I, I would. If I could. If, I, if that was possible. But I can't do that. Because number one, I don't know what God's doing through this. And this might be to bring America to God. It could be. It could be. But look at, look at this story right out of the Word of God right here. So we, we see that what God's will is, what God's plan was. God's plan was that the elder shall serve the younger. All right, now, here's something else that come in, is trickery. Here's Jacob, Esau's, got out, went hunting, and, and I, I'm not sure what all is involved in this, this idea of being a con, cunning hunter. I, I know that he was probably an outdoorsman, he maybe liked to, hunt animals, but they may be more involved in this than than we're than we're getting at, than we're seeing. And so here is Esau, he's he's wore out, he's tired, he's hungry. Here's Jacob has fixed all of this. And so he sold his birthright. So there's, there's Esau. He's sold it to Jacob. The Bible says he went on to even hate his birthright. We would apply this to 
our salvation, I think. Did you know there may be people that have got to the point that they just can't stand their salvation? They've sold out. So, we, we've got this. The Bible says, the elder, plainly, very plainly, the Bible says the elder shall serve the younger. So I want you to look at some things here. Number one, Isaac was wrong. Number two, Rebecca was wrong. Number Three, Esau was wrong. And number four, Jacob was wrong. All of them were wrong. All of them were wrong. And it just went all to pieces because they operated under this, this heading. Now, As we study this passage, however, Jacob, Esau's twin brother, wanted the covenant blessing. Here's the thing about favoritism. Look at that right quick. You'll hear it. I almost missed. Here's the thing about favoritism. Isaac thought that he was going to die. And his eyesight had gotten poor, and so he was, and he thought he was going to die because Ishmael had died at around 130 years of age. And so Isaac had convinced himself that he was going to die. He wouldn't die for 40 more years. And let me tell you this you don't know when you're going to die, and neither do I. We love to be the old people staggering around on the hill with holding on to our canes. We don't know. But, however, Jacob's, Esau's twin brother wanted the covenant blessing. And with the help of Rebekah, his mother, he schemed to get it by disguising himself as Esau. If God's promised you something and God's promised to give you something, you don't have to scheme to get it. He'll give it to you and he'll give it to me in our own time. So, We find that disguising himself as Esau, part of the disguise was to put hair on his hands because Jacob, very simply, was a smooth man like myself. I don't have a lot of hair and very smooth person. And Isaac, I mean, Esau was very different. He was a, a very hairy fella, and he was a, an outdoorsman type person. So Isaac, being nearly blind, felt Jacob, and he was uh, nearly blind. He felt Jacob, and he would seem like Esau. For Esau was a hairy man. And the, the Bible says that in uh, chapter 27, verse 11. I'll read that again. Chapter 27, verse 11. The word of God says that. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. The disguise worked. It worked. 
For when Isaac felt Jacob's hands and arms, they felt like Esau's hands and arms. And Isaac gave Jacob the blessing. But the disguise was not complete. For when Jacob spoke, his voice was not disguised. You may be testifying that you're a Christian, but you you may be wearing the Christian clothes and you may feel like a Christian but you're not. Listen to what the Bible says. But but the disguise was not complete. I'm reading my own words here. For when Jacob spoke, his voice was not disguised. As a result of that, Isaac, in perplexity, said our, th- our, our thoughts for our message. The voice is Jacob's voice. But the hands are the hands of Esau. Inconsistency of Jacob's hand and voice illustrate the problem of hypocrisy in our world today. It illustrates the problem of one's talk, the voice, the voice, not corresponding to one's deeds, the hands. It doesn't matter how many times that you say with your voice, I am Esau, (laughs) or I am a Christian. If your actions doesn't prove it, I thought about, and I realized that there's times in our lives when there's going to come a time that you and I possibly may not be able to come to church. We we could be sick at home in a bed or in a nursing facility. And I, I certainly hope not And I hope it not only for me, but for you also. But you might, and I might. We we can't 100% guarantee that. I remember when my mother was so low and she was passing away. Really, she actually was. We didn't know it at the time. (coughs) But she is actually on her way to heaven. And I told her, I says, now, Mom, I will never put you in a nursing home. She, I'll never forget it. She looked at me so serious, and she said, you can't make that promise. She says, I'm liable to get so sick that you have no other choice before I go. And that's, that's with you and me and all of us. We just can't make that promise. But we're talking about some of the problems that we're going to see here in just a few minutes that we're, we're some of these things that we're facing in our day. Talking about the voice of, and the hands. Number one. Here's a few illustrations. 
many politicians, <laughs> many politicians in our country are this way. Their words, voice, is one thing. I read an article in the newspaper. In fact, my wife brought it to me and she says, I want you to read this. And I read an article in the newspaper where that it said just yesterday, or I think it was maybe Friday's newspaper, but she said, I want you to read this. And where that the news media and all of these people said that Congress is more religious than America, the whole, you and I, the, the, us people in America. Many politicians in our country are this way. Their words, voice. When it comes election time, they're ready to fly away. They belong to a certain church or a certain group and, and they're for, for, for all kinds of Christian rights and biblical rights. Let me put it like that. Biblical rights and the way of the teachings of the Word of God when that's the voice. But when they get their way and they're in there, then their deeds are their hands are the hands of Esau. Broken promises. Broken promises. Do you not think that in just reading this story that probably Rebecca and Isaac both knew that it was that the Lord had told them that this covenant blessing was going to go to the younger? It's in the Bible. That it was going to go to the younger rather than to the elder. But both are trying to have their way. So we see broken, many broken promises in our day. Broken promises. They promise you everything. But when they get in, it's a different story, isn't it? Number two, I want us to look at the hypocrites in the church. Boy, let's get this thing down to where we are. In the church, how many hypocrites? You know what? One of the things that I've all, has always amazed me, I'm really careful when somebody says this to me. Preacher, I'll never leave you. I'll be here. Everybody in this building might be, everybody in this building will leave before I ever leave and I'll be right here with you till the very end. Now their, their voice may have meant that. I remember a person told me that one time in my home and he broke that, he broke a promise before he got out of the house. The hypocrites in the church are like the voice and the hands of Jacob in that with their voice they make a good confession of faith. But their hands are of the conduct of Esau for they do not live a godly life. I just don't understand how some people, I'm not talking about those that's sick. I'm not talking about those that are, that are, uh, that may have sickness this morning. Those that are having to make different arrangements today. 
sending him an automobile out here in the yard because they don't want to spread anything or uh, in, in the building. I'm not talking about that. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about people who say that they're, they're behind the church, they're backing the church, they're for the church, but they never come to the church. They never come. Now you can say what you want to. Because I just got through explaining to this Sunday school class here just a minute ago, those that hear that when I was in, uh, when I was a young man, young boy, between 10 and whatever, and we had a good Sunday school teacher, but I wasn't very interested in what he was having to say uh, in Sunday school, and I may have been the president of the class at times, or the treasurer at times, or some other part of the one of the ones in that class. But I was like Jacob and Esau. I used the voice of Jacob, but I had the hands of Esau. They don't live a godly life. These hypocrites in the church that say that they're in, they like it. They're there. They're, they're behind you, preacher. We're going to give our money. We're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to, we're supporting all that. But they got the voice of Jacob, but the hands of Esau. My dad used to say, actions speak louder than words. Your actions prove what you what you are. All right. Got one other thing I want to say. We've looked at this. Now, I want I'll, here's the third thing. Much music in the church reflect reflects the problem of the voice of Jacob and the hands of Esau too. The words of the song, they are the voice. They're the voice. Of the music may be Christian, the words. I I've studied a lot about these great writers and probably one of the great, and they, they, look, there's been a lot of good writers of music, songs in our hymn books. And they're good songwriters today. You take a woman that like Fanny Crosby who wrote over and they they first thought over five hundred so, uh, poems and so, poems and songs, but they went back and they found some of her stuff, and it's over way, may, way over a thousand songs that that woman wrote in her lifetime, blind, blind. I know of a lot of people that wrote music. They they write good music. But you know what? You can take John Newton's Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But you know what else goes to that goes with that song? The, the music. The music. Now, I not every song that we sing has to be a hundred years old. Not every writer has to be already be dead that 
we sing their songs today. And we don't always have to have funeral dirges to serve the Lord. But I'm going to tell you, the voice, the words of the music may be Christian. Did you know a lot of modern music, they have actually taken the words of old songs like Just As I Am or Amazing Grace or some other song and changed the rhythm. They really didn't even change the notes. They just changed the rhythm. They, the, but the beat, the beat of the music, the rhythm of the music, that's the hands, the hands of the music definitely is not Christian. Now there's just some music that's not, that they may have Christian words. And I'm not against some of the new music that we're singing, to, that people sing today. I, I, some of it, I think, it is, is very good. But I'm going to tell you, some of it is definitely not Christian. I'm going to say this. I say if the song that you and I write, if I were to write a song, and if you were to write a song, and that song can fluctuate from the Christian chart to the world's chart, it's not right. <laughs> you know why it does that? It's because of the beat. The beat, the rhythm, the beat. What is the what is the the beat of the music do. Honey, it, it affects your flesh and my flesh. We can do that with, you You get a group in here that can that really can sing and I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I won't call any names, but we had a man in here a few years ago that could play a, a keyboard. That I'll tell you, that man can play a keyboard better than anybody that I have ever seen in my life. Now, I didn't used to think there's a difference between a keyboard and a piano, but I, I soon learned <laughs> that they are. But the beat, the beat of it, it's the beat. The music definitely is not Christian. It's nothing but the beat of the ungodly world. So it has the hands of Esau, but it's got the voice of Jacob. And I don't know what kind of music a lot of you listen to, but I'll tell you, you think about this as we think about this, this little scripture that I've read to you today where we're talking about this. And I want to give you this right here. Number one, you know what we see in this story? We see a sovereign connection. That's over there where the Bible said that the elder is going to serve the younger. That's a sovereign connection. But we also see a selfish connection. And that is where Jacob, I mean, Rebecca and Isaac, using their favoritism, if you have so if you show favoritism in your family to one child or another, one of these days you're going to isolate a child. 
They, they know. They know. My friend this morning, let me ask you, regardless of where you're listening, where you are this morning, are you serving the Lord? Are you a Christian? Biggest thing, are you a Christian? You may be listening by Facebook. You may be sitting in your own home, still haven't gotten out of your pajamas yet. But I want to ask you, who are you really serving? Are you serving God? Or are you serving the flesh? Who are you serving? If you need to be saved, I ask you right now to just ask Jesus to come into your heart. And you may be a member already. But if you're not 100% sure, or if you're not sure, I'm asking you to ask Christ to come into your life and pray the sinner's prayer in your own personal life. Don't forget our service tonight at 6 o'clock. Be praying. Our Father, thank you for what you've done for us. We just pray, God, that you'd be with us and help us in this day and this hour. In Christ's lovely name that we pray, amen.